So, good morning, everybody. Nice to meet you here in Warsaw. Um, I'm Adrian Bablock from AT Manufacturing, and I welcome you to, uh, to our Ukraine Cooperation Workshop. Actually, I, of course, greet the audience here, or greet the audience at, the, at home at the PCs at the online session. And uh, really, pleasure to have you here, actually. And um, we at AT Manufacturing will present ourselves here. We will work with you. We have a nice agenda prepared, actually. We have some presentations on what project we are doing, how we are cooperating, and in the end, I want to make a workshop, which is sadly not available online, but we will do here on specific topics, how, to, how AT Manufacturing as an organization can help Ukraine startups, Ukraine companies uh, come into the European ecosystem, actually. And uh, also how we can help you to, let's say, evolve further. Um, we're cooperating with a lot of companies uh, throughout um, all of Europe. We have dedicated hubs everywhere. And actually, we are in Warsaw for one of the hubs. It's uh, Pierre Blukasiewicz. And uh, I'm maybe not the best person to present Pia Blukasiewicz at all, but uh, we have somebody here who can do that. Uh, it's Christoph Lipietz, the director of the commercialization department of Lukasiewicz Piap, and I would just ask him to the stage to, to join me, and uh, maybe you can present some, some things and uh, tell our audience what Pia Blukasiewicz is all about. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, good morning, uh, warm welcome at the premises of uh, Łukasiewicz Piap, a research institute dealing mostly with robotics. Uh, I'm glad that we could have this meeting here with you present here in our, um, in our institute, also with our guests online, um, because it's a special occasion, the times are turbulent, but we have to think forward, we have to think about what is um, going to happen when we finally uh, get over these very hard times. And it's time to start getting ready. Um, we joined the network of EIT manufacturing three years ago. We were followed by some of our good partners from our network. But I will not talk too much about EIT manufacturing now, because there's a whole session about it today. My job is just to welcome you so shortly about our institute. I said before that they are dealing mostly with robotics. So we were funded in 1965, and we started manufacturing technologies. So introducing new modern technologies to manufacturing industry was our main goal, and we've been doing it ever since. So here you can see why EIT Manufacturing uh, Hub is situated in our institute. Second important thing about our existence is our international cooperation. We completed more than 100 international projects. We are present in framework programs of the European Union since the third edition, I think, that's early 90s. So that's another reason why we decided to get involved with EIT manufacturing. We think that international cooperation in research, in innovation, and general exchange of good practice, of good ideas, um, is the, way, the best way to move forward. And for that reason, for the last couple of years, we've been also playing a role of an integrator, a hub, a one-stop shop in many areas. So one of them is obviously EIT manufacturing for manufacturing technologies, but we are also a digital innovation hub funded from Horizon 2020 where we've been dealing with uh, robotics and inspection and maintenance technologies. This month we are launching our European Digital Innovation Hub, which is much larger with the scope of many technologies, many markets. Um, we are bringing together the biggest um, scientific institutions of Warsaw region, but also public institutions and private companies, all with the aim of um, helping companies to um, speed up their digital transformation. So to uh, wrap up, because um, there are more interesting um, lectures and more details uh, coming up in the agenda, um, manufacturing technologies, international cooperation, and hope for the better future very soon. 
That's our main points, what I wanted to share with you. And I'm, again, very glad that we can have this event right now. Thanks for being with us here. Thanks. So, uh, thank you, Christoph, for your nice welcoming words. And uh, really, I, or really, let's say, I'm also the first time here for me at PIAP, and I'm really happy to be here. And uh, we had already a nice, actually, session yesterday on Horizon for Poland, uh, uh, Horizon for Poland, let's say, talks. It was really interesting and amazing. And uh, but uh, without further ado, I would uh, like to call the next speaker onto it, uh, which we also partnered here. It's from the Ukraine Cluster Alliance for, uh, let's say, auto uh, from the Ukraine Automotive Mobi Mobility Cluster. It's Olga Torovimova, and uh, we already partnered with her in Ukraine together with AT Manufacturing to to get the first outreach and uh, to have a good contact point and. Uh, the communication works pretty well, and now I would like her to go on the stage and uh, just present the UCA for herself. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, first of all, I would like to say thank you to, to EAT Manufacturing. Thank you for Christian, for Adrian, for, for, uh, for Laxmi. Thank you for your preparation work and, uh, and really uh, worked hard to, to invite a lot of people and engage them. And a lot of people would like to come, unfortunately, due to some uh, uh, regulations and situation right now in Ukraine. It, wouldn't, it wasn't possible, you know, that to register. It was um, 37 yeah, registered people, but unfortunately, not all of them could come. But thank you so much that you have a, a, a translation of our of uh, of the event, and I'm sure we could uh, we could find we we uh, during this day we could find a lot of uh, possibilities and opportunities for for our uh, for our organizations, for our companies, for our uh, innovation uh, organization and our uh, innovation hubs to to cooperate further and to be more in integrated into uh, European community. Uh, so I do understand that it's definitely not my presentation, I mean not my floor and today not uh, more about uh, EAT manufacturing and your projects and your programs, but still maybe some words about uh, Ukrainian Cluster Alliance. Uh, actually the Cluster Alliance, the idea was in the year for, for some years, but uh, exactly during the war when it was started. When the war started, uh, the cluster alliance uh, has uh, has begun, yeah, has has arisen, and uh, we we have started to work from the beginning of March, and already on 24th of March we had already kind of founding meeting uh, with 16 clusters, and uh, the Cl Ukrainian cluster alliance was founded. So we have. Um, uh, already uh, membership and European cluster alliance, and we uh, from the beginning of war of the war we are in a close cooperation with European uh, uh, cluster collaboration platform, and in uh, September we began uh, to be a member of uh, TCI network. Right now we do have already 48 clusters. So from 16 to 48 clusters, and I think that it's still growing. Yeah, so I have such a feeling, and moreover, there are maybe some new clusters organized in Ukraine. We do have new industrial parks, and uh, because uh, from <laughs> August we have new law for industrial parks in in Ukraine, and uh, yeah, and we have a lot of supporting projects and programs for innovative companies, innovative organizations, and uh, we really looking forward exactly for uh, for such a kind of growth. Some words, I know that uh, no, no, no way to have um, too much time, but um, uh, still we have a different industries inside our cluster lines. I think even industries are also coming, newcomers are also in, in our clusters, but most of them, and this is the core of our cluster, it's of course uh, engineering, automation, machinery, automotive and aerospace, maritime, so it's exactly uh, the core of our cluster and it's uh, a lot of innovation companies and organizations are there. 
Uh, well, we do have already strategy and export internationalization is uh, part of um, our cluster. And of course, the most of our uh, services are here. And the biggest accent we also do on innovation and supporting our clusters and our organization in this field. Uh, we are very active in cross-cluster cooperation in Europe. Uh, from the beginning of the year, as I said, so we have started to have new partnership and right now we, you know, every every week we have uh, new meetings with new clusters and uh, trying to uh, make this partnership between clusters and between SMEs and of course with the accent of uh, innovation. Uh, Thank you for ET manufacturing. I would say it was not really planned as many actions which we have right now. And during eight months, we really, you know, we act a lot. And, uh, but we do understand that it's in a long term strategy. And we understand that it was not uh, really occasionally. But in the beginning of uh, June, I was participating in manufacturing day in Vienna. And after that, thank you that we become uh, partners for ET manufacturing. Well, uh, I, I think I will, I will not stop too much on uh, other things which are we really work hard on supporting our companies, our SMEs on a short term, short -term uh, perspective. But I also should say that uh, in our cluster alliance, there are already some uh, winners for innovation projects, uh, which which happened exactly this year. Uh, in September, we participated in a European Cluster Conference and uh, we had a delegation for European Cluster Alliance and uh, actually from uh, European Commission and DigiGrow, we had some meetings and in uh, February we will have a cluster conference, Ukrainian Cluster Conference in Slovakia. It's also one of the big results which we didn't expect, actually. And it was very funny uh, picture after my speech in a section for uh, dedicated to Ukraine and main messages which we would like to share with the whole world. That we definitely have really big uh, potential and really big uh, capacity and competence in R&D and innovation. And we definitely would like to be partners for Europe and uh, not just, um, you know, trying to. And, and of course, the, uh, the question that uh, definitely industry sh from zero, four zero or two should go to five zero and be more human centric, sustainable and resilient. This is also our message which we share with the whole world. Uh, actually, we also participated and uh, it's still, still on the decision as I understood until the next month, uh, this European Innovation Council and European uh, and Ukrainian Cluster Alliance and APAO uh, participated in uh, in this call. We still hope that we will win this call. Uh, and in this case, as you see, it's uh, 20 million euro and there will be a lot of uh, support for Ukrainian startups. Uh, but again, we had also a lot of uh, meetings, conference, and in this case, even bilateral agenda in advanced manufacturing with uh, Czech Republic. And of course, we are working further with, with other countries and other, other uh, companies. So um, Ukrainian landscape industry, uh, as you see, not, not so small. And uh, there is also, I would like to uh, present uh, Olena Sadoma. She's... Uh, um, uh, responsible for internationalization of APAO, and she could uh, give you much more information about about it. And uh, we also develop uh, some our uh, answer to national programs, our proposals for advanced manufacturing for international partners, uh, concerning and according to the national programs of Ukraine recovery. Well. Again, we do have also our matchmaking platform for our innovators, for our engineers, which are uh, also open to cooperate. We really have quite big human capital in Ukraine, uh, which is quite high educated and, uh, uh, yeah, and as you see, 70% uh, have uh, high educated, uh, high education. And concerning Ukrainian recovery, there is a big part for uh, 
recovery of Ukrainian manufacture, and of course with the accent and on a frame and with the strategy uh, to uh, European strategy as uh, uh, green transition, yes, and uh, digitalization, and of course resilience. Well, during these uh, eight months, we really had big journey and uh, really good partners, and we are growing and definitely would like to be also more focused in our further steps and uh, to be your reliable partners for future. So thank you so much for your attention and looking forward for, for the next steps of our fruitful cooperation. Thank you. So, that were the words from the UCA, Olga. Thank you very much for a nice presentation. I really enjoy working with you, actually. Um, this is always a pleasure, actually, because you always deliver what you promise, and that's a really good example, actually, to how a corporation should work. And uh, we heard now a lot about AT Manufacturing already from, from collaboration partners. Uh, now, I would like to call Christian Bollick under the stage. He is the managing director at the CLC Central location in Darmstadt. And he will present what we really are, what we do, and uh, let's give him the floor and try to present AT Manufacturing for everybody of you. Thank you very much, Adrian, um, and also warm welcome from uh, from my side. Um, as I said, my name is Christian Belling. I'm the director of the uh, co-location center Central in Germany that is also responsible for all our uh, hopefully upcoming activities with the Ukraine. Um, and um, I'm, I'm taking, also would, would like to take the chance to ex briefly explain what EIT manufacturing is about um, and uh, also how, how we work and what our focus topics are. Uh, maybe in uh, um, some words in the beginning, I mean, for us it's also now an, a phase of experiencing what, what can be done, what is needed. Um, we need to find out what, how does our programs match with what uh, Ukrainian stakeholders need right now, what is possible to do. So therefore we, are, we are really appreciate your input, yeah, what, what can be done, what is needed. And that's also for us the, was the reason to really speed up uh, with the collaboration on, on the Ukrainian Cluster Alliance because that provides us with an opportunity to get feedback in many different from many different sectors you saw automotive uh, machinery aerospace that are sectors we are covering uh, today with our partner network and um, so therefore we have all the opportunities textile fashion um, there's a new EIT uh, knowledge and innovation community on culture and creativity and they are very much focused also on fashion so that means there we are also talking about collaboration with them, which may also be an opportunity to collaborate. So therefore, it's really for us also important to know what are the what are your needs, what um, how how can we support that, and uh, then we need to yeah uh, implement our activities together with you. So. Um, EIT um, is the uh, abbreviation for European Institute of uh, Innovation and Technology, um, and we are not the only innovation community. You see several of them on different topics. We are the one for manufacturing. We are now in the third year of operations. Um, there are some years to go uh, with the funding from EIT Manufacturing. And already today we have a strong community across Europe having 85 core partners and in total roughly 300 organizations involved in uh, our activities. So that means our, only in three years um, we could reach already uh, a huge number of organizations being active in manufacturing. And um, how, how do we work? So in general we have uh, several, act we have plenty of activities. Yeah? And it, I, I don't have the time to go all in, in uh, all details. My colleagues will, let's say, uh, step in into some of our programs um, in, the, in the coming uh, presentations. But all together you could always say, okay, we have a knowledge triangle that focuses on innovation to the market. So we are really interested to bring innovation to the market, uh, supporting that last steps from research to marketable product. We are supporting that in different ways. So we are building consortia, or we, we are supporting the building of consortia between industry, academia, uh, research, 
Um, and um, to, to promote this, this innovation, we are supporting startup scale ups with our business creation team. Um, and what we also offer is education to really also train people in that new technologies and that developments that they are able to assess what what uh, can be used in production and also be able to manage that uh, new systems, new technologies. And there's a fourth uh, activity, so-called regional innovation scheme. And um, as we know, I mean, competing um, with, with West, well-established Western European uh, organizations that is for, for some countries, for some sectors challenging. Therefore, we have a dedicated program that has restrictions when it comes to participation and is really focusing to transfer to in, innovate in those countries um, that have that that need to let's say increase yeah with the aim that they get to the level than uh, other countries like germany so therefore we have this budget yeah that has uh, a special focus on that areas um, and we will we will uh, learn about that later on so some some key facts um, as, as always in Europe, we are organized as a public-private partnership. Um, in total, we get a we will receive funding for 14 years, so that means 11 years left. Um, next to the hub in, in Darmstadt, Germany, you see we have another six locations, which is also our strength. So we are not focused, uh, we are not only working from one location. We have uh, right now seven locations, our headquarters in Paris. Next to that, Gothenburg, Vienna, Milano, um, San Sebastian, Essen. So we are really covering abroad um, the whole of Europe, also with with our um, with our co-location centers. We also have invested into platf digital platforms, and that may be also in the current situation um, something we, we, which which may be useful. So we have our skills our learning platform skills.move um, which can be accessed um, and we have our innovation platform agora yeah that also is um, open to everyone so um, you see there you can register that are opportunities you can can already uh, have a look at and uh, look what what may be of of interest um, in that that areas so a brief look on our our partner network um, we this is only our core partner network. We also, as I said, next to that we have roughly we have more than 200 organizations we are collaborating with, and you see that it's industry driven. So the half of the partnership is consisting of industry, and that's important because we really need to know what industry needs are, and then we need to match that with with the right hand side universities, RTOs, offers developments and bring really the innovation to the market um, in, in manufacturing. Next to that, we have our startup community. Um, and you see a lot of startups we are working with. Um, and I'm, I'm quite optimistic that beginning of next year, we can add a logo there uh, for the first Ukrainian startup. We are currently in uh, negotiations, so they are progressing well. Uh, it really fits thematically to manufacturing. and. Um, I'm, I'm quite optimistic that we can add them beginning of next year under our support funnel. Yeah. Um, next to that, we are also building an ecosystem, or we have start, we have built an ecosystem in the past years. So starting on the European level with the uh, uh, with EFRA, the European Factories of the Future Association, so more the research-oriented activities in Horizon Europe, with the machine tool industry, with um, with the Data Space Association uh, Gaia X, and then with a lot of local initiatives. You see the Ukrainian cluster lines, but you also see in from Germany, Belgium, Ireland organizations that bring together uh, industry, academia, and with them we are collaborating uh, to build a network of networks that really involves as many organizations as possible in our activities. And then next to that we are of course present in various um, various events um, regarding venture, regarding industry. Um, so that's that's also where we take part and uh, promote our activities, promote our startups um, we support and, and so on. And when it comes to industry, I mean, there are usually more short-term, more long-term needs. So um, how, how do we work with industry? So in general, first we need to know 
what are their needs. So that means we need to talk to each other, yeah, and we are doing that regularly with our with our industry com uh, members. And then we need to find out, okay, what is really short term? Yeah, where do they need a solution within some months? Yeah, and they don't want to wait for funding. So that means it's a, really a matching between the need and a solution provider, um, which also, especially in, in the new technologies, is very often a startup that brings that new technology to the market. Um, we have then also ch um, um, competitions that bridge this gap between corporates and, and startups, and there we also award smaller prices. You see uh, 30,000, 50,000 euro, which is really meant to be for a um, to be used for um, POC, so a, a pilot implementation. Then we have our own funding schemes, one to two million, really focusing from from, from, from prototype to product. And we also have started to build consortia on the European, also on the large-scale projects, which meant to be research um, that provides us um, the opportunity to get involved already in in earlier stages as EIT manufacturing, identify with our partner network the needs and then react on that and build the right consortia to develop technologies to the market. So for our own funding schemes, um, we are really looking on, as I said, prototype per product. Our projects are also compared to other uh, schemes quite short, one to two years. We only expect three to five partners, especially industry is must-have in the projects. We also expect that someone is really the business owner of the of the development. Uh, really have an interest to commercialize um, our projects. Also, if if you are so somehow have seen uh, your Horizon Europe uh, projects, they have a very let's say strict structure how it has to look like. They have a special language and everything. In our case, it's really f let's say meant or designed for industry, so we don't want to know what has been achieved in terms of publications and papers. We are interested in, okay, what is the current stage? So please justify that this is a prototype working. Um, what is the what is the USP? The, uh, what are the competitors? Why is your solution better than existing um, solutions on the market? What's the business model behind uh, you, you have you have in mind for the commercialization? So that's what we are interested in. And we are not that much focused on what has been done in, in the research area and how many how many papers have been have been submitted. So this is really a different difference compared to um, to um, more research oriented funding uh, schemes. And as I said, so um, also to come to a conclusion, um, we have our open innovation and networking platform, Agora. Um, you find the link there. So um, you can register already today. Um, it's open for everyone. So have a look at that. Um, there also you find information on news technologies. We also always um, have the call for proposal process um, that comes up uh, beginning of next year. Um, on our Agora platform so that you can connect to other stakeholders to discuss potential proposals. So this is an opportunity you can use already today, right now. And to finish also with the topic of education, so what we we are doing there is really starting from pupil society, um, presenting, okay, what, what's, yet, what's manufacturing about today? It's not a, a dirty environment anymore. We need high, high qualified, trained people in IT, um, in, in automation and, and, and other areas. And this is what we, what we would like to, what we transport there uh, as a message. We have then master PhD programs um, for, for students. Um, and we have with our online learning platform and other instruments uh, like teaching learning factories. We have instruments to train and, and qualify workforce um, for new technologies. So this is what we are doing. And of course, there are a lot of activities below. I have, don't have the time now to go in all the details. We can, if there's interest, discuss later on, of course. Yeah, and that's um, for the time being, the short overview on what EIT manufacturing is about. And my colleagues will step in a bit more in detail in the coming hour. And if there's any question, 
left. So we are there now uh, during the day to answer everything and hopefully um, you will also get an impression what EIT manufacturing is about. So thank you very much for the time being and I'm handing over back to Adrian. Thank you. So thank you very much for on Christian for the presentation of AT manufacturing. I hope you get everybody got a let's say first nice view of what we are doing. I know it's a lot to digest. This is a lot of different topics we are addressing in innovation, in education, in business creation. Um, what we prepared now for you is actually as we're really trying not to just give an brief overview, but also talk a little bit about the projects we do. Uh, Christian already mentioned it, we have a RIS initiative, and today we have uh, Lores Valero Leconte with us, he is RIS Hub Manager, and uh, I would like to give the stage to him and, and just let him present what he's going to do and what we are doing and how the possibilities maybe for Ukraine can be in the best way. Lores, please come. Okay, so hello everybody. I hope you can hear me properly. So um, I am Loris Valero Le Comte, and I'm working for EIT Manufacturing for the RIS um, programs. Uh, I'm a RIS Hubs manager, and today I'm presenting you uh, the EIT Jump Starter, which is uh, initially a program managed by my colleague Veronica Rodriguez. So I'm presenting you know, present it, presenting it on her behalf. So what is EIT Jump Starter? Oops, the other side. So uh, the EIT Jumpstarter is a pan-European pre-accelerator program and um, it has been opened for five years for all the risk countries. So the countries that are considered moderate or emerging uh, innovators in Europe. We decided uh, recently to open a new edition uh, specifically for Ukrainian innovators who joined uh, the EU due to the recent events. And uh, this uh, program actually reached 555 European uh, deep tech startup teams uh, and offer to them uh, the best class trainers and mentors to ensure the standard quality uh, on the program. And this program actually won already two European awards for excellence. So it is a unique collaboration of uh, six uh, key community uh, between EIT Health, EIT Food, EIT uh, Inno Energy, Raw Material Manufacturing and Urban Mobility. And it's really a cooperation and so a cross kick uh, program uh, where we all work together to create this competition. So, <clears throat> The purpose of uh, this program is to uh, create a curriculum built on the lean startup, but translated to specific industrial needs. So it's about setting and validating his assumptions, deal with them, um, create the market segmentation, uh, create a proper customer value proposition, uh, also provide with competitive advantage, finalize with the product, and finally create the finance and how to create the revenue. The purpose for us with this is to help the startups to develop themselves and to really enter into the market of Europe with the best idea and all the knowledge to really develop your startup, really develop your company. So, how is the journey for um, this round of uh, the pre-accelerator jump starter? So the applications are still open until the 28th of November, so you still have five days to do so. And um, <clears throat> basically the applications will be done online. So once it is done, um, a jury of evaluators will select 15 teams. We currently have already more than 130 applications, so if you are interested, please apply and join us. Uh, it's really a great opportunity for the development of your company. Um, and in January and February, the 15 teams that have been selected will join online boot camps that are managed uh, now by our partners Ines Tech from Portugal and Tartu University in Estonia, who will provide you all the skills, all the information, not only about uh, technological uh, innovation, but also when it comes to business, marketing, finance, budgeting. Um, and those online boot camps will last around 15 hours. Uh, 
So the focus will be a pitch deck and identification of the areas of further development. And um, uh, the purpose is to deliver the fundamental qualitative and quantitative skills of developing a business. Then, after those 15 hours of online boot camps, five hours will be uh, individual mentoring for each of the teams that join the program. And then, finally, in March, uh, between February and March, it will be the grand final, which will also be online, uh, with a pitch contest where you will present um, your final product, your final idea, and potentially win the grand prize of 7,500 euros. So, by joining us and by joining uh, the EIT Jump Starter, you will get specific training and mentoring from the best in class mentors, as I said, Tartu University and Ineshtech. Cross-sectoral validation grants to cover your travel and accommodations that are around 2,000 euros per selected teams. An, ex an exposition to all the KICS network, which is one of the biggest network in innovation in Europe. Uh, super tools to create and validate your business model. And as I said, a chance to win the final prize of 7,500 euros. The second prize is about uh, 5,500 and the third prize is 3,500. Just to let you know, so take the chance and take a shot. So. And those are the numbers from uh, EIT Jump Starter in 2021. So it was the fifth edition program, so you will be the sixth. And we had 548 applications and 220 teams trained. Uh, for this year and for this specific program about Ukraine, EIT Manufacturing can select 11 teams. Um, uh, so, as I said, take the opportunity to join us, to join the network, and I have access to all the opportunities we can provide. So, this is a list of many startups that participated to, pro to the programs in the past. Uh, one of them, for example, Hub Catalyst is still working uh, with Tartu University and with the hub EIT Manufacturing, of EIT Manufacturing, and um, so they're development is currently in a good process so yes so check your eligibility of course so do you have ukrainian citizenship and uh, do you have a cross-sectorial deep tech or industry idea solution then you are eligible you can also join us even if your company is not registered we can help you with that so this program is actually open to all, so it can be researchers, master and PhD students, uh, research uh, people from the research centers, professional entrepreneurs or idea owners who would like to develop their innovative idea into business ideas. So you can fill out the application form online, so you will need to prepare yourself, of course. So. On the website, there will be the terms and conditions, so don't forget to really be precise in uh, what ideas you are bringing and what sector you are applying your innovation to. And be careful with reading the questions. So then, online, um, it will be done online, so prepare everything in advance. Read everything, reformulate everything if necessary before the submission, and be really careful about one thing is to use English, but UK English and not use US English. That's actually really important. Um, <coughs> and make sure that your application is, been, uh, is done between the 28th of November. So, once again, uh, join us. EIT Manufacturing is here to help you. We can give you the keys to create your own business and, to, and for its development. So thank you for your attention and thanks a lot for Piap and Lukacevic for organizing this important event and for the invitation. Thank you for your attention.
So, Loris, thank you for being here. Uh, just stay two minutes more maybe on the stage with me. I can um, stay even more longer if you want. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> more longer. Some time for us, so that's, that's a, good, a good thing to hear. Uh, actually, I was just wondering if you have for the AT jump shot, just some questions from the audience, or I don't know if the online presence uh, present want to, to ask something, just type it in chat. We are going to, to answer, of course. Um, I don't know. Do we have a question after the audience? Because I have my questions prepared, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or if I came just up, but um, if you have something, I would of course go first with you. So I don't see any questions right now, but Madre, just for me, you said uh, you have to use UK English. Why is that? Um, well, because most of the countries of the European Union actually mm -hmm. use the English, uh, UK English, mm -hmm. I would say. And um, despite Brexit, uh, even if English is no longer an official language in the European Union, it's still the most commonly used. And it was actually the one used before the Brexit. Mm -hmm. So we kept that going. So basically, if you would like to write program uh, in your um, application, please write it with two M and an E and not only an M, because that's <laughs> American. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, so there is nothing like... Um, let's say uh, AI in the background checking for, for let's say, keywords or do well, you use some, some tools in the, let's say, evaluation process? Let's because say that uh, we received so many applications that, and so many great ideas mm -hmm. that uh, since we have only 11 applications that will be selected out of more than 100, mm -hmm. uh, the evaluators and the jury might be a bit picky. And so mm -hmm. it might play on this, you know, English okay. that will make the tiny details. So it's really about paying attention to the details mm -hmm. and we know how important it is in innovation. Okay. So this is basically a reason why, one of okay. the main reasons why. So, so actually you say there are a lot of applications and uh, yes. we have to be, let's say, uh, yeah. firm on, on, on the on the regulars. And it's really on. about, you know, showing you um, how much you pay attention to what you do. And um, this innovation, it, it shows how invested you are. Okay. So it's a recommendation. <laughs> so if anybody has, of course, question while uh, applying for it, uh, are you the best, let's say, person to speak to or are there some contact points when you need somebody needs help with application? Yes, of course. Actually, can I go back to the presentation, perhaps? Um, so uh, the first two slides. Yes, it's coming back. So actually, um, already on the on the website, you have uh, the guidelines that you can follow and get all the information on. And we also have one person, as I said, my colleague Veronica Rodriguez, who is uh, actually in charge of the Jump Starter that you can contact. So yes, yeah. So let's go to <laughs> the last slide. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, so up. Okay, so you have the application here, apply.eitjumpstarter.eu. And here you have the email address of my colleague, Veronica, Veronica Rodriguez, that you can contact uh, to get more information, or if you have specific questions regarding the program, she will have more knowledge to help you out. Okay. Yeah. Thank you very much. Well, thank, thank you. you for your presentation. Thank you for, for being here with us and your time. And also, let's say, for uh, being part of the workshop, also leading all of the workshops later. Mm -mm. So I'm really looking forward to that. Well, thank, thank you, you for much. your attention and thank you for the invitation. Yeah. So we, we heard right now a lot about, let's say, what EAT can give you or what, what programs we have. One, one project a little bit more in detail, actually, the EAT Jumpstart program. But we don't want just to speak about ourselves. We also have uh, somebody else invited here tonight. Uh, tonight, uh, Today, it's uh, Meji Medrohova. I hope I speak it correctly from Robotwin. It's actually a startup that is supported by us. They have actually a great, let's say, passed with us already. I think they, they just won some of the awards we presented to them. And I'm really happy to have her here. Sadly, not in person. She's just uh, say she could not travel to Warsaw at this time around, so she's going to present online. And uh, just for my question, I don't know if Maggie is already aware and can hear me. Yep. Hello. I can hear you. Happy to be here. Hi, Maggie. Nice to see you. And uh, I would say, just say what what is your experience with AT manufacturing and uh, how 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 did you let's say. Uh, how, how did it work with you as a startup? The floor is yours. Sure. 
Thank you very much. Uh, I prepared a presentation I'd like to like to share with you just that we have a better better chance to to get to know our story. Uh, can you confirm you can see the presentation? So, uh, yes, yes, you can see the presentation. So feel free to start. Perfect. Thank you very much. So. Uh, welcome from my side. My name is Maggie, and I'm representing the company Robotwin, which was heavily supported by the EIT. And I hope that uh, my presentation will motivate you to take part in the EIT programs because it can help you uh, at least the same way it really did help to us. So first, I would like to start with uh, introducing what we are doing and then uh, talk more about our experience with the EIT. So we are a young startup. We are based in Czech Republic and we are focusing on manufacturing. So in the topics of VIT, we are part of the VIT manufacturing. And what we are doing is uh, trying to help manufacturing to not be reliant on human workforce anymore. And we are trying to save people from doing repetitive, unhealthy manual jobs, which as you can see in the picture, it's for example, a spray painting. So the idea uh, came to us from the industry itself. Uh, they reached out to me when I was a university student and it happened to be my master thesis to finding a solution for this program, for this problem. And uh, the solution which I designed in the thesis, uh, it's based on motion imitating uh, so the idea is that the workers who work in the factories and doing the manual repetitive jobs will have our device that would track their motion when they are working in the factory. Our software would process the recorded data and then generate the program for the robot automatically so that we can automate their job without actual need for programming the robots by hand. Uh, we are the first one to digitize employees' know-how in such a way, and it can bring many benefits. Uh, on the video, you can see uh, the testing of our prototype in the real production, and the benefits I just summed up uh, on the slide. So we can, we don't need programmers to program robots anymore because we do it automatically. We are transforming routine manual jobs into collaborative automation. That way we can reduce safety and health hazards because the people don't need to work in the ugly environments any longer. Uh, the solution is very scalable because one worker can teach many robots at the same time. We can handle even very complex tasks and we are fast and accurate, which means that we save time and resources. And uh, here I'm on the slide where I would really like to emphasize how EIT helped us on the journey. So as I said before, the idea was uh, first presented in my master thesis. And then with the idea, we actually joined the EIT Jumpstarter in the year 2021. Uh, we really came with a prototype validated, but not more than that. Like we didn't have a company before. I studied uh, engineering. So I had very little knowledge about business development actually, and these topics. Uh, but with these settings, we entered the EIT Jumpstarter and it really, really made a big difference for us because we attended all the trainings, we learned the basics, how you can actually validate your idea, how you can uh, scale to something what is actually a business, how you can talk to customers, how you can uh, propose the value for them, how to prepare your financials. We went through all that. We learned how to prepare a pitch. We went to grand finals, we were successful, and it was actually the motivation for us to found the company eventually. But we didn't win only the grand finals, we won the presence in the network of EIT, and that is super valuable for us, because after the Jumpstarter, we were still in contact and we were invited to other events. So, for example, we were invited to the open call for proposals for 2023, which is also managed by EAT Manufacturing. And it is a call for projects which have high level of innovation. And 
the call can give you funding for one year to actually finish your development from the prototype phase until a real product launched on the market. And we were super lucky to be invited to this call. We built a consortium. And uh, next year, we will be developing our product with the help of this funding. Also, thing to mention, the consortium we built uh, contains some partners such as uh, Czech uh, University in Prague or Chefriel, which is an Italian company. And we wouldn't make the partnership with these companies without EIT manufacturing, because these two are actually members of the EIT manufacturing. So we were presented a list of members which we could contact and which were willing to go with us into the project, which was super great because we didn't get really only the financial support, but we even get the resources support with the, these two companies or like institutions helping us with the development. Another event we, we were invited and we took part in uh, was the Discover Vienna, uh, which was a sub event in a big startup festival in Vienna this summer. And uh, we competed in a boost up competition, which was also super great because we met other startups, we made contacts. Hearing some noise in the background, I, I hope you still can hear me. Huh? Uh, speaking on the, on the Zoom, so uh, just maybe you mute it yourself. Or can... <laughs> yeah. Sorry about Somebody can speak uh, Ukrainian. Sorry, I, I could just try Polish, but I don't think this will be understandable. It's okay. <laughs> yeah, it's a, so, a, a age, of, age of virtual meetings. It's, it's tough. I, I see. <laughs> um, anyway, um, yeah, a lot of uh, a lot of opportunities for us. A lot of steps on our journey, which actually were affected by EIT, and I can only recommend going into the partnership with EIT because it's really opening it's really opening a lot of possibilities and it's opening the network and that was super valuable for us and I really hope it can be valuable for, for you as well. Um, I would like to also invite you if you have any questions on like our personal experience with the programs, don't hesitate to contact me. You can reach me uh, afterwards. I would be more than happy to share uh, our experience. Meji, thank you very much for your presentation. Uh, I really always uh, like to see how, how, let's say, we also make something that, that makes startups happy, actually, and uh, that helps you to, to set up your company. I don't know, do we have some uh, questions out of the audience? Or I, I think I've, I saw some, some text being typed into the, the Zoom meeting, but I just cannot see it right now. Um, so if you if you want to ask a question when you're in Zoom, you can maybe just unmute you and just try to, to speak. If not, maybe just, just a question for my part. Um, what is it, I, you were talking a lot about what, let's say, what, is, what it is that, that we do, but what is, and you said the main point that you could learn from us was the, um, the, the, the business creation part, how, how did it work? Did, did, how was your experience with, with contacting us or what was what, what, uh, the main parts we, we helped you with? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so as I said, we uh, were in the EIT Jumpstarter and part of the EIT Jumpstarter are also uh, hours booked only for you and one mentor from EIT. And we were super lucky because our mentor is like really, really great person. And they went with us through like our specific needs. So we were like, we have this product, but we don't know how to contact customers. And they helped us with the market research. And then we were like, okay, but we don't know how to how to set up the price. And they helped us with, helped us with the value proposition. And they really made the effort to help like with our concrete problems or questions. And that's, that's amazing. And actually like in summer, we went into more uh, deep uh, co collaboration with them. And we even, like send them our documents, like our business plan, our profit and loss table. And they are reviewing that and they are giving us feedback, which is super, super, super valuable. Okay. So if there's one question out of the audience, maybe RSU Ukraine, RSU space, can, 
I think we can hear you. Can you try to speak again? I, I just, uh, I think the connection is a little bit bad on our side, maybe, but. Or maybe you can try typing it into the chat, actually. Hi, um, I, I'm, you're still on mute, actually. Maybe you could just, if you really want to take the question, to unmute yourself and then. Okay. Okay. Then uh, let's let's give maybe to, to just thirty seconds to to type the question. Uh, so, Maggie, uh, where are you based? You're based in, in in the Czech Republic, right? You're also sitting there. So yeah, um, we are we are based in Prague. You're based in Prague. Very good. Um, yeah, sadly, sad, sad that you could not ride in Russia actually today. So it was like I was really wondering. I would really like to see you now because also, also I really valued your, your, let's say, your idea and your company in itself. And maybe just another maybe topic-wise question is, um, you, you told about okay, this this um, you're teaching a robotic arm by by using an exoskeleton actually. And uh, how many repeats do you need to really let's say get this? Uh, done correctly or this is, this is just a one time what and it works forever or do you need some some repeating uh on, on doing that yeah so the the difference we make on the automation is that we really emphasize the skills and the professionality of the workers and we include them in the process so we actually give them the whole responsibility for teaching the robot and if we say that they are professionals, and they are, then it's enough for them to record the trajectory once and the robot is good to go. So we don't try to optimize for the best of, of all possible solutions, but we really say, okay, the worker knows the best his job, so let's take his or her template and use it for the robot. So actually the process is very, very fast because if the worker records it once and he or she is happy with how it looks, it can be in the robot in like a matter of minutes. Okay. Thank you very much. I don't know, did we get uh, another question from the audience or no? I think I didn't see it. Okay. Ah, oh, uh, I, I think, think he's, I think he's asking for the LinkedIn URL for you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay, I'll be, I'll be more than happy to, to put it in the chat. Yeah. And uh, maybe you can just do that. And then I would say thank you very very much for your time, Angie. Uh, I hope for, let's say, further fruitful collaboration with us in, in the future. Really looking forward to that. And uh, I think there are some, uh, I'm happy that there will be some other things in preparation. I'm, I'm sure of it. And uh, have a nice day for now. And uh, I would like to go to the next topic. Actually, what would it be? What is the presentation? which uh, I myself will be held actually, because it's a little bit uh, kind of uh, an impulse talk I wanted to give before starting into the, the workshops. Um, we now heard about what is AT manufacturing, we heard the startup, how it is to work with us. Um, we have a lot, also a lot of innovation projects, but not just with AT manufacturing and in the, let's say, manufacturing scope. But as you hear with the ET Jumpstarter, it's cross-sectoral. We are also cross-sectoral programs. And there is another one I would like to process, or let's say one project I would like to talk with you about because it's um, it's really impactful and it's a really nice story in itself. Um, but first, what the project uh, say that I'm personally actually also leading is about, is, um, we could say innovation to and with AI, but it's more about creating test beds. So creating an tangible environment to process or to, to implement new solution, if it is on automation, if it's on digitalization, if it's on 5G, IoT systems, and so on, in an environment that is as near at production level as possible. Yeah, so we're, because implementing such solution directly in the production line is mostly impacting too much on the producer, yeah, because you have, you have your timeframes, you have your um, you have your orders, you have to deliver everything you want to do, and uh, this is making it a little bit, uh, let's say, challenging to, to try something out. So what we are going to do in this project, we are building up dedicated test beds, also test center, or pilot lines, where we can then 
try out these new solutions and push it forward, being as near, like I said, in the production as possible. Um, we had this, this let, let's say, a two-year approach already. We had it in 2021 and 2022 uh, with a total funding of five millions. Yeah, so what would you give out to a consortium? Um, in this, we, in this uh, let's say, initiative, we partnered up with uh, 80 food, 80 digital, and 80 raw materials. So we are really bringing the whole ecosystem together, not just the manufacturing ecosystem, which is, I think, an impactful part. Um, as you are not just concentrating on one, one point in the, let's say, that in the manufacturing line or the manufacturing cycle, how you want to call it, but you're trying to reach out to different, uh, let's say, points. And um, we had here actually, let's say, like I say, we are building up four projects right now. One is the Saif project. It's uh, just shortly, not, not going into details, it's a decentralized AI. So we have a camel solution into your your shop floor, and it discerns if human moves or if, a, let's say, a forklift is driving, and um, they can assess where will, for first, they're assessing where this person will go or where it's standing and where the forklift is going, and they're sending information to the forklift to, um, to say him, please uh, drive slower or keep out, uh, let's say, please stop because people are in your vicinity because a forklift driver cannot see behind machines. And with this technology, it is actually possible. So it's a solely visually based um, sensory system for all of the factory, um, making it possible to see each person in the factory. Of course, not just one camera, but you have different angles, and that's then calculated and sent to the forklift driver. Um, iFish can I will present shortly. But uh, for now, I would like the T-Food project. The T-Food project is based actually in Greece. It's uh, about the diary uh, manufacturing system or the diary factory. And um, we had two points we, we did here. One is a robotic arm that is making the logistics at the end of the production. So sorting different, uh, different diary products onto one pallet automatically with a visual eye implemented. And the other one is a sensor system that was implemented in the milk tanks um, so that the milk is tracked from, let's say, when it's taken out of the, let's say, when the, when the cow is milked and it's taken into the, the first tank, it is all time, um, let's say, we're watched over. Sorry about that. Um, it is very sensor included on temperature, on um, on time, of course, and then you have a little bit of an assessment what happens to the milk as well. And one of the, let's say, biggest impact points is really the temperature, because when the milk falls below the temperature, it's of course cooled down, and um, then you can assess, okay, is the cooling working properly? Is the steering working properly? Because the milk cannot be just, let's say, let without steering into the tanks, because then at the edges, this would, let's say, rot a little bit. So you have to, to keep the watch out for that. And with that, you have then a sensory system already in place at the farmers, at small farmers with the first tank, till b before it gets, let's say, delivered to the, to the diary company that is then processing some products out of it. Um, and one that we're building, and let's say the next one, I want to present a little bit more, it's iFish can. It's a really nice story if you think about it. Uh, this is just, let's say, a summary page. Uh, we, we try to concentrate on food loss and waste operations here. Yeah? So it was like really, um, we made also a call where a consortium could be built up. And this one is actually uh, from Portugal and Spain um, with a company being in the lead here, which is uh, sort of where the solution is tested and where also the test bed is implemented. And you can go to and watch it. Um, that's a Finais company. They are doing fish cans, uh, really special ones. So it's a gourmet fish can in the end. Uh, sometimes they even sell the 40-year-old fish cans in it all. Um, but what is really interesting about this is they are making, uh, they have a little bit of problems, of course, with energy consumption, with water consumption, with contamination of the of the product in itself, because we are here in the food industry. And we wanted to, to find out, OK, how can they get better? How can they save some of the energy? How can we save some of the water actually produced here? 
or uh, used here for, for all the processes in itself. And um, coming back to the company itself, Inice is a real manufacturer. Yeah, so, so what I see a real manufacturer and what I mean with that is there are still people sitting 30 women, women actually, which is totally crazy when you're going to visit where you can make also a factory tour, which I also did. And there are women there sitting, they are cutting cucumber by hand. They are taking the fish out by hand. They are filling the cans by hand because the processes to automize this are for them. On the one hand, they don't want to do it. On the other hand, it's also very tricky because before the fish is put into the, the can, it is already cooked. So it's really soft. So you cannot really, let's say, take a robot to, to, to grab it and put it into the can. This is not possible at all. So this is why it's done by hand by actually women sitting there. And um, you can maybe imagine how, it's, um, how challenging it is to, to come to a company like that and try to implement a system that will track water consumption, that will track energy consumption. Yeah, because, of course, there's a lot of water needed. And uh, for example, in the middle thing, you see this big basin that's normally filled with water, where the woman take a basket full of fish, put it down into water and pull it out again to clean the fish after taking it out. And uh, this was automated, but they're not happy with that. But, but, and, and this is like, you're thinking the woman have, this is really hard work because the basket is not easy. When it's fish, uh, filled with fish, it's 25 kilo or something like this. And you put it down in the water and pull it up again. This is impactful on the back. And we wanted to automate it. And um, now we are tracking the water consumption of that, the energy consumption of that to compare it to what the workers can do. And um, what really is interesting here is that you have a company like that and they are still try to do something. Yeah? We, we could con convince them together with our partners to, to go a little bit forward, to start with digitalization, to start the transformation. Um, in the end, we, we tried okay, to make a real-time detection of uh, events where some losses occur, um, trying to make a generative, uh, let's say, model to predict and uh, perceptive action plan to avoid these losses, and in the end, control their environmental impact on that. Um, of course, it has to be as simple as possible. We are here in a really not digitalized company, so it has to be simple solution. It has to be created. We had to create a digital infrastructure, yeah, controlling the food loss and water energy, um, integrate some data acquisition in it, um, and prompt and correct, uh, improve the, to, let's say, uh, actions to reduce the food loss and improve the sustainability in itself. How did we do it? Actually, we just implemented some sensors in all the steps we had, where we collect data. This data is then uh, fed over the IoT, which was implemented into a manufacturing extrusion system, where it can just visualize that. So you have to imagine, they're always walking around with paper, taking notes on the production steps, because this is what you have to do when you're, look, when you're in the food production cycle. Yeah? And this was all, let's say, digitalized and is going to be fed into, let's say, first the dashboard and an AI predictive model in the background. And this AI predictive model is the interesting thing for us, yeah, because we are being fed data from a company really working normally with manufacturers or with real workers. And um, they are really that far now that we have a predictive model. It is up and ready, and I could go into a lot of details about that, but I will not. I think my time is running out some shortly. But um, let's say about that this all data is, let's say, in a specific way included into a model. And this model allows, after, of course, a neural network, which was included, and a specific thing that I'll not go into detail as well. Um, allows to assess how a change in production or a change of uh, some of technologies used will impact, on the one hand, the production itself, the energy consumed, the water consumed, and the total cost. And not just now, but over time. Also including some, um, let's say, key factors for heightened energy prices for heightened water prices, which will be an impact in the future. And um, 
in the end, each, let's say, innovation you make in this company now can be assessed beforehand, can be planned, because they have a monthly changing production cycle. And um, you can really assess what will happen in the end with this model. And this is working. I think we have good examples here for now. It was implemented uh, as a last year, ending this March 2023. And uh, we are really looking forward for, let's say, the, the next years. As you know, it's an AI model. It needs a little bit of data to run. Each month is different. So we are really ramping that up right now. And uh, I can just invite you to take a look at that. It's in Porto. If you are everywhere, uh, you can book just a factory tour and see what we are doing there. Or let's say we see how PINAIS works in its own. And um, with that, I could go a little bit into what we are doing this let's say this year, it's just running till end of the year actually. Um, it's a totally different topic and as you see when I talk about we are cross-sector or we are cross-sector because this was food manufacturing or let's say food production, this is something completely digital, this is automotive sector, this is let's say um, the evaluation of recycled e-motor parts which we have here in that card. So. Um, just shortly to wrap this up, because I cannot go into detail, but it's a really interesting project. We are taking ma magnets, recycling them, putting them back into the magnet, and then making an assumption how this magnet influences the efficiency of the motor. And this is a virtual test bed. This is being, uh, we have a test rig built up in uh, Torino, uh, at the Politecnico di Torino, and working with Santa Reply, with SIM 4.0 and Daika and Magneti from Slovenia, actually, which was one of the only companies that can really reset everything. And uh, if you don't want to know more about that, please come to me. Hmm? So, and uh, are there any questions for now? And if you just allow me to step this out, I just get some information right now. So, um, just informed that the next speaker is a little bit late for now, or let's say not, uh, I'm not uh, late enough for her, uh, to be honest. So, um, do you have any questions right now for, for anything from out of the audience or from anything else? If not, I will, can share some of the more details about the uh, eDrive uh, eMotor VTB testbed, actually, because this is also one of, let's say, a, a really interesting projects. So, uh, if you want to questions right now, then uh, let me just get a little bit more into, let's say, the topic here. Um, what we did here is really taking, like I said, magnets out of used motors. They are scrapped down differently because nobody is, let's say, taking really care about the magnets, how good the quality is about that. Even we had to fight in the, in the project about this because we, we bought some magnets to be recycled but the quality was not that that we wanted to have. Yeah, so we had different, um, the, 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 the magnets that we wanted to recycle had a different uh, metallurgy structure, which was maybe not what we were looking for, but okay, we said, okay, we're trying to recycle here magnets, so this will happen all the time. So what we did is we just tried, we, we break it down, build them up again. It's a center <coughs> technology in behind. And this is now, let's say, sent back to the Politecnico de Torino, where we have this test rig set up. And um, with that, it's actually pretty easy for us to, to say, OK, how will be the influence of these new magnets? Very characterized, of course, in before. And we have an online platform where we can make all the calculations in the end. But this is just the, the last thing we can do. What we do need to do is to take each magnet, test them in a test rig, and feed our platform with information. The platform is being built up right now. For, it's already online um, at the, let's say, center re reply activity. And you can choose <laughs> yes. which quality magnet you need or which, can let's say, it? what um, properties you would need from a magnet. And then you will get an uh, assumption how this will influence the effectivity of the electromotor you're working with. In parallel, we are also, let's say, trying to develop uh, electromotors that are easy to scrap down, easy to change, um, 
to make it even more possible to, to work with, let's say, recycled parts in the future. Yeah. So just giving Olga. Okay, I have a question on who the end user for this technology could be. Um, for the technology itself, I think it's the whole of the automotive industry that could be interested. Yeah, because magnets, we have a big problem with what, when we talk about magnet production because everything comes from China or Japan, yeah, or in India or Australia, I think. Uh, we have no or not a big producer of magnets in, inside of Europe. But we are needing more and more of them because of the transition to electric motors, to, let's say, to, to a more electric environment in, in total. So we need more and more magnets, which we do not produce ourselves, so we have to buy it from somewhere else. Um, one step to, to help with this let's say, evolution is not to buy, but to recycle. But to recycle a magnet is not an easy part. And this is, let's say, a first step. We have, uh, I think there are two recyclers in all of Europe that, are, that can be named. They're both actually part of AT Manufacturing, or let's say working with us. Uh, one of it is uh, in this project, it's Magneti Ljubljana from Slovenia, um, which are just building up this technology for this recycled magnets. And the test bed in the end will allow, okay, to, to assess if a recycled magnet would, will have slightly Worse properties, yeah, because it cannot be like a new one. It, it will, every, will every time you will have some, let's say, some some waste, let's say, in in the process, of course. Yeah, so this is a little bit challenging, but uh, will allow to assess uh, assess if this reproduced magnet is good enough for your application or is good enough for the efficiency you're looking for. And this is what the testbed will be able to do. And the testbed in itself can then be used by every end user who is interested in using the, the recycled magnets. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> can I speak? Also, um, in the end, uh, also, yeah, the idea is good. For, for, let's say, yeah. to <laughs> buying the magnets, I think yeah, everybody is producing. Yeah? Uh, it's, it could be interesting here. Um, the other thing around is who's going to use the test bed or the, the virtual test bed. Is, I think this is the engineers that are working with on the, let's say, making a new electric machine or something like that. Yeah, because they will have to assess, okay, which magnets do I use? Do I buy new ones or do I use the recycled ones? And of course, if the price keeps dropping for the recycled ones or the price goes up for the ones from bought newly, this would be a question everybody who's making, let's say, motors will have to ask himself. What do you mean? Um, you mean uh, after if they would be interested to buy these magnets or let's say service centers? Um, could be. This depends really on the usage of the, the electronic motors because um, normally a magnet has a pretty long lifetime. To, to be honest, yeah, of course, there's some time in, in that he's going out, and uh, therefore we are also trying to change a little bit the design of e-motors or to check if it's possible to design it easier to change dedicated parts, and then it could be a topic for, let's say, sales centers or after sales centers, yeah, to, to, to take a look at that at least, yeah. Okay, thank you very much. <laughs> if you're really interested, uh, I, I would like you to, to, to approach you and go to Torino. It's a nice city, <laughs> actually, but the testbed is actually there. And with Santa Reply, we have a good partner here and the Polytechnic de, de Torino. They built up a fully full test rig, not, not just inside of that project, because, like I said, the funding amount for all of the projects is around 5 million. They spent, I think, 5 to 6 million just on a test rig. Uh, one part of it is now part also of this, which is, let's say, the assessment of the effectivity of the motor. But it's uh, planned to just evaluate electric cars. So it's a specific test break for testing electric cars at the Polytechnic de Torino. So if you want to check the performance of that, that's the place to go actually right now. And we are building it up and we are happy to, to show it because we are pretty proud of it and actually I, I would also be. And they are also trying to go for a commercial solution for that, which is actually also in our topic. Yes, it's a, it's a testing lab in itself, yeah. 
The target application for the testbed is, of course, the, the testing facilities or the development of everything. But um, let's say that the magnets, the recycled magnets are set, but they are set by Magneti. And I think they have booked full book till next three years, I think. Yeah. So another question here. <laughs> So we are in any manufacturing we have a dedicated amount of let's say, money set up. Um, just maybe for me to, to, for the audience, the repeating question, sorry about it, I just forgot about. Uh, it was the question how we fund this project and how, we can, how people can participate in that. I, I think those are the two, two question lines I have to answer right now. So one, of course, we are, um, we are financially backed by the EU, to be honest, or by the EIT indirectly, the European Institute for Innovation and Technology. And we have dedicated innovation programs where we take where we have some, some funds to, to give out and we are making open calls. Everybody's invited to participate in that. Um, where a consortia can come in and take part in our activities. We try to get a little bit into topics. So we have different topics each year. So circular economy, sustainability as a main topic driver, breaking it a little bit down into more um, Details is like, okay, implementing a digital twin model or making something like this. Yeah, this is one of the projects possible. And um, the funding scheme is that uh, we are not funding whole 100% of the project. We are funding a part of the project. This depends a little bit on which innovation call you're looking for. If it's an innovation call out of AT manufacturing or like this one, if it's an AT community innovation call, then you have maybe a 70% funding. So 70% of the, let's say, of the project is then funded by us. And um, we, we actually, it's an open call, it's an evaluated by experts. And uh, Christian, you want to come on? And, um, and we, this will then be assessed. So it's the, the process in itself to, to be part of that is pretty easy. We have an open call, it opens, the next one opens uh, in February, I think. At ATU Manufacturing, February next year. The call is repeated every year. We are trying to evolve a little bit into a rolling call. So this year we already had two calls open for innovation projects. Yeah, so one just closed actually at the 10th of November. So three weeks ago was the, at the end of the second call. And um, the end of the second call now starts also in January with the project. So the, the evaluation time is pretty short right now. Yes, and the same actually in March is also starting then at the uh, 1st of 2023. Yes, you, you find all information on the website. If you have more questions, you can happy come to me. I will point you to the right direction. Yeah, there's no problem because this is the question I can talk half an hour on. Yeah, because it's like. But it's, in the end, we are also making matchmaking events because the consortia have to have a dedicated eligible criteria here. Yeah, so you're you're not allowed to be just from one country. You have to cross borders. Yeah, because we are looking for a European solution for the European ecosystem, starting and enhancing that in itself. Yeah, so this is what. Um, and there are some more actually. We try to to keep it as easy as possible, but sometimes we some we have to to, to look into. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. And just maybe to complete this for the ET manufacturing innovation call, we have one or two year projects. Yeah. So uh, one year project can be funded with around 1.3 million and two year project with 2 million budget. Yeah. But total project budget. So 70 30 project funding. Yeah. Just, just to complete that. Yeah. Okay. Then thank you much. Now. Um, now I would say after that much of presentation, um, we and maybe I will take a 10-minute break. 
uh, just to, to grab a coffee, to drink, drink something. And afterwards, we have another presentation waiting for you from uh, Taylor, which is going to present the Hay Initiative, which is a little bit more about education, because as you see, we, we talked a lot about startups. Now we talked a little bit about innovation. Now we are going to talk a little bit about, about education and the possibilities here. So see you all in 10 minutes. And till then, thank you. Thank you.
So, hello and welcome back actually to our Ukraine Cooperations Workshop. I'm uh, happy to have you all back here with me. Uh, I hope you enjoyed your, your short break. Uh, maybe get a coffee, get something to drink. Uh, we have one more presentation to go actually before going to the workshops and uh, sadly closing a little bit of the online session for that. But uh, I would like to invite actually Taylor to present it. She's also sadly not here with us because she has another let's say, event being held in America. So it's actually pretty early in the, mor in the morning for her. Hi, Taylor. And she oh, will yeah. talk about higher education, the Hay Initiative. And uh, Taylor, nice to have you here. And I would say the floor is yours <laughs> for now. Okay, thank you very much. Yes, I'm, I'm sorry that I can't be with you all, but I'm happy to be here virtually um, and I will indeed be presenting the Hay Initiative. Let me just share my screen. There we are. 
So as Adrian said, I'm Taylor Hall. I'm working with EIT Manufacturing as the Hay Project Officer, and I'm here to present to you the Hay Capacity Building Initiative. I have two parts in my presentation. Very briefly, I just have some background. Probably you all know this at this point. And then I'll talk about the call three for proposals, which is a funding opportunity open right now, available to all of you. So as we all know, the European Institute of Innovation and Technology is an EU body designed to enhance Europe's ability to innovate. Uh, it's very important that in EIT, we bring together the three sides of the knowledge triangle. So research and development, business and education. EIT manufacturing is currently one of eight knowledge and innovation communities, KICS, but there's plans to expand. So in the future, there may be more. Um, this is a brief call policy context to understand how the Hay Initiative came to be. Um, we're working under Horizon Europe and the EIT Strategic Innovation Agenda of 2021 to 2027. And under those policies, we hope to raise the bar in education and create systemic impact by engaging higher education institutions, HEIs, Hays at an institutional level. So we're looking for a systemic level, institutional level impact. And therefore, Hayes will be empowered to become engines of innovation. So through this policy understanding, the Hay Initiative was born, Innovation Capacity Building for Higher Education. We have several specific objectives, but mainly to note here is that, again, we're hoping to create systemic impact changing the level of innovation and entrepreneurial capacity at all levels of the education value change chain and bringing together non-partners and partners to collaborate, um, integrating the knowledge that is already available in the KICS in different Hays and organizations. Uh, how do we do this? Well, so far we're running calls for proposals. We've already launched call one and two, and so they are currently ongoing and running. We have 49 selected ongoing projects involving um, over 500 organizations and 290 HEIs, higher education institutions, and we span over 38 countries. So you'll see that we're both physically and figuratively quite a broad um, organization and initiative, very far reaching. So right now, the call three for proposals is open, it's running and it's available to all of you. So I'd like to introduce the call three for proposals and then speak about, about how you can all apply. The call three launched in November and it's going to close at the end of February, 2023. Um, it will fund up to 16 selected projects proposals at up to 750,000 per project. The funding period is 15 months from May, 2023 when projects will start until July 2024. And the focus of this call is deep tech, increasing deep tech talents and connecting with the deep tech talent initiative. Call three is open to all, um, including if you are part of call one or call two, cohort one or two projects. Um, if you are, you can still apply. So usually when we start speaking about this, the first question is, what is deep tech? So deep tech is a classification of an institution or an organization with the expressed objective of providing advanced and emerging technology solutions to deep societal challenges. They present scientific or engineering challenges requiring lengthy research and development and large capital investment before successful commercialization. These are just a few examples of deep tech fields, not at all exhaustive. We have advanced materials and manufacturing, aerospace, artificial intelligence, machine learning, biotechnology, blockchain. Again, you'll see these are all kind of cutting edge technologies, but this list is not at all exhaustive. Uh, the Deep Tech Talent Initiative, DTTI, aims to scale at least 1 million people in the next three years. So the HEI initiative has partnered with DTTI to help train these 1 million people. So call three projects from and proposals will need to be focused on deep tech, um, providing deep tech trainings or other deep tech talent fostering activities. So the call three is split into two phases. Um, 
it, we run over the total 15 month period, but we have phase one and phase two. There's a clear distinction between the two phases and continuation from phase one to phase two is dependent upon reaching a couple conditions. We have some operational conditions to meet. So the approval of some budgets and the governing board decision to, to continue the HEI initiative. And then we also have project level conditions. So each project will need to meet certain deliverables or tasks that they plan to achieve in phase one in order to proceed to phase two. You can see here a very general overview of the two phases. We have phase one from May to November, 2023 next year with a max funding up to 350,000. And then phase two from January to July, 2024 with a max funding of 400,000 euro. Total 15 months and 750,000 euro. Who can apply for this? All of you. Um, first of all, higher education institutions, Hayes, are at the core of this initiative. They're at the heart. Uh, what are Hayes? They're nationally recognized um, institutions which offer, offer tertiary level qualifications uh, with a recognized degree. The applicant or coordinator for a project proposal to the Hay Initiative must be a higher education institution. However, we want to integrate all three sides of those of that knowledge triangle. So an application needs to be submitted by a consortium, a group, and that consortium needs to include at least four organizations. There's no maximum number of organizations that can apply to a Hay project consortium. One actor must be the hay that's applying. Another actor must be from another side of the knowledge triangle. So this could be public or private enterprises, research institutions, public bodies at a local, regional, or national level, or other intermediary organizations. And then anyone from Horizon Europe eligible countries is welcome to apply. And obviously Ukrainian institutions are highly encouraged to apply. We also highly encourage that the consortium composition has a broad geographical scope. So this includes RIS eligible countries, RIS regional innovation scheme hubs. Uh, we also encourage consortia to consult with regional and territorial authorities to, con to, to understand what needs to be done in the local ecosystem. And then again, going back to the systemic level of institute-wide change that we're looking for, we like to see commitment from top management, from faculty and deans or department heads if you're a higher education institution, or from top management if you're an organization such as a business or a research institution, um, and then across the institutional level as well. So a minimum of two faculties or departments within your organization should be involved in the application process. Uh, the IVAP is the Innovation Vision Action Plan. It's very synonymous with the application and it's your long-term vision for the project. So it takes a, a vision towards 2030, it's your long-term goals. It also lays out how you will meet deliverables in your projects, which milestones you plan to reach, and it's essentially your application. Um, so your application would answer all of those things. It's all in the online platform. And this IVAP is your guiding, um, document for your project. It illustrates how HEIs will integrate, integrate and engage and cooperate to strengthening the regional innovation ecosystem. And it's also based on the HE Innovate self-assessment exam. So this is a self-assessment exam designed for higher education institutes, um, which points out where they can improve, where what needs to be done better, but also what they're doing well and what they could build upon. So if you are interested in applying, I highly encourage you to join our conversation starter platform. It's a matchmaking and networking tool. It will support you to meet and match with other participants who best fit your project proposal concept, but also to browse and be invited to join other projects or gain new ideas, set up meetings, et cetera. Um, all of the information that could be useful to you is here. <laughs> We have the call three text, the application portal, as well as the Hay Initiative website and the Deep Tech Talent Initiative website. Please do not hesitate to get in touch if you have any other questions or email me if you need to chat. You can also email the HEI Initiative email, hei at eitrawmaterials.eu. 
I hand it back to you, Adrian. Thank you very much. Hi Taylor, so uh, just, just stay with us for, for, for five minutes. Um, I would have some questions, but first for the audience, do you have some questions to the Hay Initiative for now? If you have no, I don't see a question right now, so maybe just uh, let me ask something. Uh, I was won really wondering, um, when is the deadline actually for, for participating in that? Because I, was, I didn't see it in the slides, maybe I better just uh, overview mm -hmm. it. Uh, am I still with you, Adrian? Yes, you're you still, still with me. me. I can still okay. hear you. <laughs> yes, the deadline is um, February 28th. Mm -hmm. So the end of February 2023. Okay, so the, that's when the, um, the proposal has to be hand in. Yeah. Exactly. Um, mm -hmm. I was just wondering, uh, you're telling about you're looking for a um, consortium out of four companies or let's say four organizations. How would your an ideal composition look like for you? Just, just to give a little, little brief example. So the, the consortium needs to have at least one higher education institution and at least mm -hmm. one um, organization from any other triangle, knowledge triangle point. So this mm -hmm. could be, again, regional actors, it could be um, businesses, could be research institutions, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I, I can't say which consortia works best for some projects. Really, it's a small, tight-knit consortia that works best with only four organizations. Mm -hmm. For others, the, the projects need much more, many more actors, more mm -hmm. involvement across a larger region or more organizations. So it really depends on your project, and I encourage mm -hmm. you to organize your consortia based on your project. I'll say so, so let's say it's not dedicated for, but it can be even more than, than four, but at least four to be included. Okay. Exactly. Um, thank you very much. And I was also wondering about this two phases in between, because you have the phase one, and then there will be a, a check if the continuation is going to happen. How will this, uh, let's say, let's say go, go forward, or who will check that? Are, are we doing that at the AT Manufacturing? So we're just also out of curiosity asking myself. <laughs> <laughs> yes, so there is the, the stop go period is actually built into the timeline for this call, which is really excellent. There's a pause in the between the phases. So we pause at the end of November, 2023, and then we'll restart in January, 2024. And during this month and a half, December, 2023 to January, 2024, both EIT Manufacturing, EIT Raw Materials, and EIT will all coordinate to, to check whether we've reached project milestones, whether we have the funding approved at an institutional level, mm -hmm. so that's EIT level and above. And then we'll get back to the projects before January 15th to say, yes, continue, or we have to fix this XYZ. Okay. Yeah, thank you very much for, for all the information. And I don't see any questions actually arising here. So thank you very much for, for joining us. Uh, I think it's pretty early at uh, where, where you are actually, <laughs> actually right now. I think you're I'm in from the other side of the world. New York State, yeah. In New York State. Okay, so yeah. uh, <laughs> thank you for, for getting up early for us and uh, to of present course. the Hay Initiative. And thank I you. wish you a fruitful day today. Um, I think you will have some things planned. So uh, enjoy the day and uh, see you soon then. Thanks, you too. So this was actually our last presentation for today. It was a little bit, let's say, the, like, like I already, let's say, said a little bit about education. It's, of course, not everything we do. We, have, we could fill, I think, days and days of projects we are doing or initiatives we have. You see, those are just a few examples, actually just three examples of, out of our portfolio that we have and um, what we would like to do or what I would like to invite you now is into the workshop preference. Actually we prepared four dedicated topics I think because we have a little bit uh, let's say low number of participants I will think we will just make two workshops one now then the lunch break then another workshop. Um, we can even switch in between the, the, the topics. Yeah, we prepared the topics on innovation and education. I would leave it to, let's say, the participants to decide on what we are going to talk about, dedicate, also directly, also going into details of some of the topics. Because 
we have our own ideas, and uh, inside of these workshops, we want to find out, okay, what is your idea? What, is, um, what do you have? What, what do you have for pain points? What uh, um, are your projects you're interested in? Or how could initiative work maybe for you? And, and how would you like to participate? So this is what the workshop should be about. A little bit, not just, okay, we telling you what we can offer, but also you telling us what you would need from us. And I think this is how cooperation works and uh, this is how we can proceed in the future and make uh, a successful and collaborative environment to create it. And therefore, thank you very much for, let's say, the participants on the screen for also being here today with us for now. Also, thank you again for all the presentations, for all the presenters being here, taking our time and a very Big thank you actually also for the organization team doing that. So, being honest, uh, Eva, uh, Eva Dagdjevesh and uh, Lakshmi Arvind, uh, our communication managers that organized this uh, nice event with us. So, all the technical tech tech things, also lunch and the coffee breaks, and so, and let's say everything else. And uh, of course, Olga from ETA inviting all the people. Yeah, so this is a, a real. Uh, we we force we have here to to make an event like that and um so just a really, really nice thank you from my side for that and i hope you enjoyed it and uh, now i would say goodbye to to the audience and invite you to the to the workshop rooms actually where also i and uh, loris will wait there for you and then we can decide on how we will let's say proceed and how we in which topic we'll go and uh, if you want to grab a coffee before and bring it to the workshop room just feel free to do that also, yeah, or something to drink before we start with the workshop because then it's like one and a half hours I would like to, to work concentrating on that. And afterward we can go into the lunch break and start networking a little bit in between each other. So thank you very much and <laughs> see you soon. Recording stopped.